Bill O'Reilly here. Welcome to the No Spin News. Monday, November 28th, 2022. Stand up for your country. Hope everybody had a nice weekend. Nice uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, we did here at the O'Reilly Domicile. Very traditional. Uh, I, I gave a little uh, historical uh, speech about the furniture that is in my dining room uh, is more than 100 years old, purchased by my grandmother and grandfather. And in the time that they purchased it, this was top of the line stuff. And they were one of the few uh, couples that both worked. Uh, my grandmother was a uh, AT&T employee before telephones were that widely spread. But anyway, you don't want to hear about all that. But um, the traditional Thanksgiving uh, is indeed traditional. This house where I broadcast from is about 100 years old. And I think it's older because there's another foundation underneath, but I don't even want to I don't even want to check it out. Anyway, uh, not too much happened over the uh, five day holiday, politically speaking. But one incident uh, is worth discussing. Donald Trump dining with dubious characters. And that is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. So Donald Trump, whom I haven't spoken to in a while, is creating problems for himself now. So rather than uh, make the announcement he's running for president and then kind of regroup into strategizing how he's going to get back to the White House, he's creating problems for himself. And this problem is almost unbelievable. So Kanye West is a fringe entertainment person. I'll submit to you that there isn't anybody supporting Donald Trump who is really interested in Kanye West. I mean, they know who he is and maybe they like his product, his music, but Trump and West, I mean, it's just strange bedfellows. And West, for whatever reason, has gotten into this anti-Semitic stuff, which there's, again, I ignore most of this, but when a big time entertainer starts to embrace it, I say it's wrong. OK, I mean, I don't spend a lot of time on Kanye West, no matter what he does. I don't care what he says. All right. He's not a person that has any influence in his country among those people who matter. You know, as much as silly kids want to think he's great. OK, that's fine. But then uh, for some reason on Tuesday night, um, last week, Trump invites Wes to Mar-a-Lago for dinner. Again, if you're going to have dinner with Kanye, that's all right. I mean, it's your choice. You're an American, but you got to make a big deal out of it. I don't know why you would do that. And then Wes brings a guy named Nick Fuentes, 24-year-old kid, um, who has said things um, in the past um, that are hateful about blacks and Jews. I mean, the guy's way out there, okay, way out on the far right fringe. So he shows up with West, and Trump says, well, I didn't really know that he was coming along. That's almost impossible to believe because the Secret Service has a list of people who get into Mar-a-Lago, and you would think that Trump's chief of staff I don't even know if he has one now or anybody running his operation down in Florida would see who's this. I mean, come on. He's a former president. So Fuentes, again, is not somebody who I care about at all. He's a marginal person, doesn't mean anything. But I got to define, you know, how bad this guy is. So um, a couple of weeks ago, he puts out a statement that says, quote, the Jewish power complex is a fundamental obstacle to American sovereignty. We cannot have American sovereignty insofar as there is a Jewish gangster complex at the center of American power. I mean, come on, this is stupid. All right, it's just dumb. And why would you ever want to say that out loud? I mean, it's not true. It's foolish. It makes you look like an idiot. 
And you don't generalize about ethnic groups. I mean, come on. You just don't. That's wrong in every way. So anyway, he sits down, Trump does, with dinner with these guys. And of course, everybody's got a camera in mont lago They're all taking pictures. And it goes to the press. And why do you want to give your enemies, Mr. President, more ammo to smear you? Because that's all we heard about. Okay, Thanksgiving through today, it's Trump dying with these two. That's it. Trump's the devil, Trump's the devil, Trump's the devil, Trump's the devil. It doesn't make any sense. All right? It just doesn't make any sense. So right now, I see Donald Trump at his lowest political point since he won the Democratic, the Republican nomination in 16. Okay? Um, He's at his nadir, N-A-D-I-R. And he makes mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. And I don't know why. When I talk to him, he's lucid. Now, you may remember uh, just a year ago, we were about to embark on the Trump O'Reilly history tour, okay, which was fabulously successful and featured no madness whatsoever. None. There wasn't any election stuff. There wasn't any of that. It was just what Donald Trump accomplished or did not accomplish in his four years as president. And the crowds loved it, okay? And it was very, very impressive on all levels. So I'm going to give you a taste of that to show you where we were a year ago today vis-a-vis Donald Trump. Go. So the first question here in Texas is something that everybody is concerned about, and that's the border. It took you uh, almost three years to get the Mexican government to cooperate with the United States to use its military to stem the flow of migrants. What took so long? What was the resistance? Well, we really took, uh, we had a big problem. We had a big problem with a thing called the Democrats because they wouldn't approve the wall. And without the wall, you wouldn't have the kind of numbers we produce. We produce numbers like you wouldn't believe now. Your government, Texas, they're doing a good job. They're going to finish the wall that could have been done in four weeks if Biden, if Biden gave the go-ahead. In fact, they wouldn't even allow Texas to use the panels, which are all bought, and they moved them over to another section of Texas. Uh, it's a disgrace what they've done. But we had, uh, we built almost 500 miles of wall. It's had a huge impact. Okay, and then uh, Donald Trump went on to say, look, Obrador was not helping in stemming the flow of migrants to the United States in conjunction with the barriers that the Trump administration managed to put up, which were effective in certain sectors. Donald Trump said to the Mexican president, Obrador, if you do not use your military to stop this incredible flow of migrants to the USA, we're going to hurt you economically. Our trade agreements are going to be torn up. And so presto, Obrador put his military on the southern border with Guatemala and the northern border with the USA. And that brought the migrants down to about 850,000 in Trump's last year, compared to now about 3 million. That's about what there are migrant encounters and migrants that get away into the USA. About 3 million from Trump's 850,000. So you would think that rather than dine with new dubious characters, this is the kind of stuff that Trump would be formulating on a number of fronts, on the border, on violent crime, on the economy, on inflation, on Putin. It's endless. It's endless. The Trump administration and the Biden administration could not be more opposite. Okay, and I'll submit to you that the Biden administration is a detriment to this country, to you and me. And we can back that up with facts. I mean, you just back it up. Under Trump, we were energy independent, which means we did not have to buy oil from Putin or OPEC or anybody else. We did. Trump made deals with Putin to keep him at bay, 
So we bought some Russian oil, but we just turned it around and sold it to other people for a profit. Now, just today, Biden said to Chevron, yeah, you can go harvest oil from Venezuelan waters. Venezuela is one of the worst countries on earth. But this is lost. All of this is lost because Donald Trump will not focus on what could really help him regain credibility and get him back in the White House. And I just don't know why. I can't put my finger on it. But when I saw the Kanye West Fuentes dinner, I went, something wrong. And that's a memo. There is a concerted effort to intimidate and silence conservative thinkers, rewrite American history, and replace our God-given individual liberty with big government controls. The very freedoms secured by our Constitution are now being threatened by the most liberal leftists our nation has ever seen. They have failed to secure our borders, weakened our position on the global stage, are trying to indoctrinate and corrupt our children in school, and the list goes on and on. But there are plenty of patriots with the courage to stand up to the far left. AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens, is the leading conservative advocacy and benefits organization in the USA. I am a member, and I hope you will join as well. AMAC members have access to money-saving benefits, a robust website, and mobile app, and a magazine filled with all kinds of great content. So please join AMAC today at amac.us and tell them O'Reilly sent you. That's A-M-A-C dot U-S. Biden is doing nothing today and he doesn't do anything every day. I mean, I do this as a public service to our listeners and viewers. All right, 1.30, he uh, hosts a congratulatory, congratulatory visit with Nobel Prize winners. Okay. All right. Great. So he was in Nantucket five days because back Monday, you'd figure you'd have a full plate. You know, how can we solve the immigration problem? What can we do? No, nothing. (laughs) All right. Back to Trump. Now, Trump's busy. Unlike Biden, Trump is busy. So, as you know, um, earlier this month, the Attorney General, Merrick Garland, appointed a special counsel, Jack Smith, to look at two things. To look at the Mar-a-Lago documents, why I don't know, FBI has them, Garland knows what they are, why do you need a special counsel? I don't know. And the January 6th stuff. Again, it's been two years since the January 6th committee has been investigating that. Why do we need a special counsel on either of these things? It doesn't make any sense at all. Anyway, Trump doesn't like it, of course, and calls Jack Smith a political hitman, which you would expect him to do. Now, there's no question that Smith is embedded in the Democratic structure in Washington, D.C. If he weren't, then Garland would not have appointed him. Just as Trump appointed Republicans to key positions, that's what the Biden administration does. Now, if you're a Republican, you're not going to get appointed by the Biden administration or Merrick Garland. Okay. Now, the only thing here that caught my eye that I didn't really fully know about Jack Smith, put his face up again, is that he was involved in a 2013 Lois Lerner case. Now, you may remember the IRS was targeting certain, there's Ms. Lerner, she worked for the IRS in Cincinnati. They were targeting Tea Party groups, trying to get them, uh, the nonprofits, thrown out of that so they have to pay tax. So apparently, Jack Smith helped Lois Lerner do that in some way, get those Tea Party groups off. It was not successful. Okay? And then, of course, this is our, uh, there was a regime change in 16, so it it went nowhere. But that's interesting. All right, so Smith, you know, he's an establishment guy, member of the Justice Department, helping Lois Smith and the IRS, you know, 
give Tea Party conservative groups a hard time. Okay, thought you would like to know that. Now, there are dueling investigations, and this will be the big story for the first six months of 2023. This is it. So we're getting way ahead of it. So you know what's coming. Dueling investigations. On the one hand, Hunter Biden. There are maybe two House committees going to come in and investigate Hunter Biden. On the other hand, Jack Smith. And you know that whatever Smith comes up with is going to be leaked out, you know, 35 minutes after he finds out something. So you're going to, and then the House committee is going to leak it too. So you're going to have leak, 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 anonymous, 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 all, all day long. Um, so on the Hunter Biden front, this is fascinating. The grand jury in Delaware began hearing evidence against Hunter Biden on May 15, 2019, two and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago. And it's a simple case. All right. Hunter Biden derived millions of dollars from China, from Ukraine, from Kazakhstan and a bunch of other places. He didn't declare all of it on his taxes. That's what this is. Okay, the Washington Post on October 6th of this year says anonymous sources, so you can't trust it that federal investigators have gathered enough evidence to charge Hunter Biden. So why hasn't he been charged? If that's true, it might not be. But two and a half years, they ought to go one or the other, right? Charged or not charged. Grand jury's not hearing it anymore. They're gone, long gone. So what's going on? That's corruption. We the people don't know. The U.S. attorney in Wilmington sitting on it. And he's not going to say anything unless Joe Biden okays it. Okay, so that's one thing. And the House committees are going to zero right into that. Um, I'm not going to, I give the presumption of innocence, you know me. But the most important thing about this case is if Hunter Biden gave money to his father as vice president. That's really the crux of the whole thing. Hunter Biden's a grifter, okay? Yeah, they'll get him, I think, on some low-level charge. But that's the big one. Did he give money to dad? Now, on the other side, um, on the uh, January 6th stuff, Schiff... Adam Schiff says they're very close to a final report. Well, they should be. I mean, these people are just morons. This whole committee is a farce. Within a month, right before Christmas, they'll say something. It won't mean anything, but that'll carry over to 23. All right, so um, let's get another point of view on this as I bloviated now for 17 and a half minutes. <laughs> Bring in Brett Tom and our go-to guy in federal justice matters. He is a former U.S. attorney for Utah, CEO of the Tomlin Group out there in Salt Lake City. All right, first of all, my encapsulation of the investigations. You want to add anything or subtract anything? I, I thought they were right on the money. One thing on the Hunter Biden that has always troubled me is a grand jury serves for about a year and a half. That's the term. Um, if they claimed in the Washington Post in October that they had the basis to bring charges, the only way they can do that is reinstalling a new grand jury and representing the evidence, or the more likely is a deal, a plea deal, which means they will have been in negotiations and discussions. And, and when you say the word corruption, because we're in the dark, add to it that they seem to have been waiting for the, the election, and then they seem to be collaborating with the defendant and his attorneys in, in order to bring what charges yeah, this they is want rotten. to bring in this case. This is rotten. And uh, it, it's just bad. It makes everybody look bad. The Justice Department do look bad. But, you know, when I, I'm not surprised. Um, you know, Brett, it comes a point now where 
the entire population doesn't have any confidence in the FBI or the attorney general or the Department of Justice. They just think it's corrupt. And they're right. They're right. Yeah, when Merrick Garland stands there and says he now is appointing a special counsel because Donald Trump is running for election, you had allegations of money being funneled from political enemies and foreign states to the Biden family, and you had an insider claiming that it was going to Joe Biden. How do you not appoint a special counsel under those circumstances, but you do now? Yeah, to look at the Hunter Biden thing. But of course, they don't want to know what the Hunter Biden thing is. Now, do you have any faith in the Republican-dominated committees, which will begin uh, in late uh, January, to investigate Hunter Biden? Do you have any faith in that? I do. And this is a little bit different than, you know, times past. And the difference is there are a number of whistleblowers who have come forward in the FBI. So I have spoken to, to counsel in the, on the Judiciary and the Oversight Committee that are working hard and planning out their oversight hearings, and they say they are loaded with individuals that are going to come forward with information. That's going to be difficult for DOJ and for the FBI. But it's got to be information that means something. Um, if it's just right. Hunter, Hunter Biden's a grifter, okay, we all know that. It's terrible that he hasn't been treated the way every other American would be treated in front of a grand jury. That's terrible. But it's got to link up to Joe Biden. And I'm not sure they have that. Yeah, we'll see. What they what they seem to hint at is information from agents saying that there was a concerted effort to bury what was on the Hunter laptop. Uh, it, you know, that that is corruption. It's next level corruption. And as well, there's uh, whistleblowers who are coming forward and saying that the FBI was manipulating and being told um, to manipulate evidence surrounding the January 6th issue, hearing and investigation. Those are those are big revelations. You know, those are I big. hope that they're they're valid. Well, we know there are eight FBI agents that were in an undercover status monitoring the um, demonstration in Washington that day, January 6th. We know that. That has been confirmed. But then Ray won't say whether they were inside the Capitol, whether what their role was, whether they gave information ahead of time. There might be trouble. Ray just stonewalls. Are you surprised that Ray is doing that? I am surprised. I, I did cross paths with, with Chris Ray when I was U.S. attorney and, um, you know, very thoughtful, younger, definitely ambitious. Uh, but, you know, you, you have a hard time predicting the, the level of, of, you know, entrenchment that many get when they're in D.C. and in the establishment. And, you know, I've, the, the January 6th investigation, and I'll just add this real quick, Bill, I, I got to see firsthand the investigators at work. I represented uh, a client who went into the Capitol, was charged, served 30 days in, in prison. She uh, was interviewed by the January 6th investigators. Almost all the questions were about Donald Trump. She had no information, no knowledge. She wanted to know if they wanted to know anything about those that were inciting and, and riling up the crowd and pushing people to go into the Capitol. They had no no interest. It Amazing. was a very odd, yeah. odd investigation. That no, I, I know that that committee Trump. was that committee was set up solely for the purpose of pinning it on Trump. He encouraged it. He incited it. That's what they wanted. That's what Liz Cheney wants. That's what the report will reflect when it comes out in a few weeks. All right, Brett, thanks very much as always. Um, a lot of good information thanks, from Brett Tallman today. Inflation at its highest level in 40 years. Interest rates skyrocketing. We all know that. Market experts like Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan, not only predict a recession, but are using scary terms like economic hurricane and unprecedented. So you need to call the only precious metal dealer I trust, American Hartford Gold. They will show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. Please call them today and they will have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your IRA or 401k. They have thousands of satisfied customers of the highest rated firm in the country with an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. 
Tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you, and they'll give you up to $2,500 of free silver on your first order. Please call 866-501-5201, 866-501-5201, or text Bill to 65532. Again, 866-501-5201, or text Bill to 65532. All right, here is the final thought of the day. Everybody around here is COVID. COVID's back. Now, I haven't gotten it. I'm not taking the vax because I don't know what the vax is going to do for me. I got four of them already. All right. And the CDC can't tell me what the vax is going to do. All the people that got COVID around here have got the vax. They're vaxxed up. They're getting it. Now, the good news is it's not very severe. It's like the flu. All right. They're not in the hospital. They're not doing any of that. No terror. COVID's back. Be very, very careful. Thank you for watching and listening to the No Spin News. We'll see you tomorrow. Listen to this. Convicted home title thief explaining what happens after he forges your home's title and takes over as the new owner. Nobody thinks that I can take their house and borrow against the house. Oh, no, I have title insurance. It's in my name. Or he would have to get some special document. They would call me, you know. Nobody's calling you. After I've stolen the title, borrowed against it, or sold the property, it's 60 to 90 days for that person to even figure out that they're the victim of this crime. You start getting foreclosure notices. You've got four mortgages on your house. You don't even own your home anymore. It's not even in your name. Home title fraud is growing two and a half times faster than credit card fraud, if you can believe it. You could be a victim and not even know it. Here's how to protect yourself and verify your home's title is still in your name please visit HomeTitleLock.com promo code radio. Then register your address for your no obligation home title report, a $100 value free. Again, get your free home title report at HomeTitleLock.com promo code radio.